here on home soil. This is how Bradford line up with Michael Withers at full back. The wingers are Tavita Vicona and Leslie Vinicolo. The centres Scott Naylor and Lee Gilmore. Halfbacks Robbie Paul and Paul Deacon. In the forwards, Joe Vangener, James Lowes, Brian McDermott, Daniel Gartner, Jamie Peacock and Mike Forshaw. On the bench for the Bulls, Leon Price, Brandon Costin, Stuart Fielden and Paul Anderson. Leeds Rhinos have Francis Cummins at full-back. Their wingers are Marcus St. Hilaire and Chev Walker. In the centres, Adrian Valls and Keith Senior. Half-backs, new man Ben Walker and Ryan Sheridan. In the forwards, Darren Fleary, Matt Diskin, Barry McDermott, Andy Hay, Matt Adamson and Kevin Sinfield. On the bench for the Rhinos, Rob Burrow, Willie Poaching, Jamie Jones Buchanan and Wayne McDonald. Bradford and Bingley Stadium. Russell Smith, the referee, gets us underway. And the size of the task facing the Leeds Rhinos, emphasised by the fact that no side has won here at the Bradford and Bingley Stadium against these Bradford Bulls. 16 games played last year, the Bulls won them all. And what's more, in four games against the Leeds Rhinos last season, they won all of those, accumulating 173 points in the process, conceding only six. That's a measure of the task facing Leeds, Phil. Yeah, very impressive record, and I suppose it begs the question about the belief in the Leeds side, although they do have a tremendous record in this competition competition reaching the semi-final on eight of the last nine years so they certainly start start and that's a pretty good start for them with those six tackles Ryan Sheridan with the kick for Leeds and there is Leslie Vinacolo his first taste of Challenge Cup football and his first welcome from the Leeds Rhinos defenders Leeds will be happy to have Ryan Sheridan back in their side he missed so much of last season made only eight appearances the little scrum half there's Michael Withers brought to the ground He'll be looking to continue his cup scoring exploits for the Bradford Bulls. And the Bulls get the first penalty of the game. Interference at that play the ball. And Leeds will know that they do have to be very, very aggressive. That's one of the difficult parts of them early in the game. They have to be as aggressive because Bradford are a very big and powerful side. But they must contain that within the rules of the game, not to give away too many penalties. And Crucial to that containment effort is Barry McDermott, seasoned campaigner. Here's the other McDermott, Brian McDermott. Big impact hit on McDermott there. Adrian Valls it was, making his uh, Leeds debut. Former Castleford Tigers captain. There's young Matt Diskin with that tackle on for short. And Matt Adamson in there as well. Adamson, another debutant for the Leeds Rhinos today. Here's Jamie Peacock. Jimmy Law's doing what he did so well in the World Club Championship match there. Just getting out of action up, committing the markers, making it easier for his big guys to go forward like Vangana. Oh, what go forward that was from Big Joe. Here goes Lowe's now. Lowe's, Gartner, Gartner. Trying to squeeze that ball out, it's come loose. And there's a fighting back play, Lowe's is into it. Going in, on in back play at the moment. As that's continued and Barry McDermott involved. And Russell Smith just separating the combatants. And taking a report from his touch judge. They're a bit lucky there too, regardless of the fight that was taking place, that Lee's defence did quite well just to scramble across because those have made it dangerous. I think it was after he passed the ball, McDermott came in a little late. And those did take a offence to that. And Lowe's and Barry McDermott Listen, being called over, over as are the two captains, Francis Cummins and Robbie Paul. What happened, Robbie? Your man was the last man to deliberately kick the ball. He accidentally struck a Leeds man, and your man is drunk, gathered the ball, he's offside. That's what I'm giving a penalty for. But calm your players, OK? Calm your players. The message from Russell Smith, that's pretty hard in a cup tie like this. Leeds have been pretty lucky there because they could have been penalised for a high tackle from Ben Walker on Gartner. Instead, they've been deemed to have a player accidentally offside. Oh, and Sheridan's fluffed that penalty and he thumped straight into the arms of 
big Leslie Vinacolo. You don't want to go doing that. And he almost lost the tackle to Ryan Sheridan, went in to steal it. It did pop out, but he regathered control. And so the Bulls are back on the offensive. Foreshore, big hit on Foreshore. Vowles is in there, and Leeds really are tangling with them, tangling too much and conceding another penalty. Well, they might be playing without Tony Carroll in the right centre position, but what they've lost there in his attacking ability, they've certainly made up for with Vowles in defence. He's got involved early on on that occasion, a little bit too enthusiastically, and they've given another goal-kicking opportunity to Paul Deakin. There is Adrian Vowles, former Castleford Tigers captain, and his infringement has given Paul Deakin this penalty opportunity. Deacon looked as though he's the man to fill the boots of Henry Paul. Kicking eight from nine in the victory over the Newcastle Knights in the World Club Challenge showdown. And that was in atrocious conditions, driving rain, howling wind. Well, this is not much better. The wind is howling, and Deacon, I think, has pushed that one just short. I think that held up in the wind, Phil. The strength of the wind. I was going to say it was a swirling wind inside this stadium, but certainly it hit the ball full on the... He hit that with enough power. They used it clear the post by just 10, stalled. 50 metres. Just stalled. And now Leeds get the penalty. A really frenetic start to this game. And I don't think Kevin Sinfield heard the, heard the call there, such as the atmosphere here. Slightly nervous and anxious start from both sides, and you can understand that, the importance of this game. The first major competitive match for Leeds, really, to be thrown in at the deep end. Perhaps the hardest challenge that you could face at this stage of the cup competition. Darren Fleary takes Leeds just inside that Bulls 40-metre line. Combination of Adamson and Ben Walker there, Walker. Now here's Matt Diskin, Diskin back on the inside to McDermott, McDermott to Adamson, Adamson, season campaigner with Penrith Panthers, nine hey, seasons with the club. On your life. Leeds on the offensive now, here is Ben Walker, Walker to Sheridan, Sheridan Sinfield, Hay back on the inside, oh, four on tackles your gone. On your life. Bradford forced to defend for the first time. Sheridan puts a little grubber kick in. Walker, has he got that ball down? Ben Walker for his first try for Leeds Rhinos in the Challenge Cup. Russell Smith has gone for the video ref, but was Ben Walker onside? That's the question Russell Smith wants answering. It's hardly surprising that Leeds have tried to penetrate this Bradford defence with a kick through into the in-goal area. Such is the strength and confidence of the Bradford team when they're defending on their own line. Brilliant kick from Ryan Sheridan. You see, the only chance you've got to keep this in the Ingle area is angling it across the field to allow it to stay in play for longer. I think he's probably just outside the question here. Now he's on a grounding issue. Russell Smith probably better place than most. The line's approaching, but he looks to have grounded it just before he falls out of play. There's Second. Walker. Ooh, neck and neck, you'd have to say. I think they're going to give this bill. This is a fantastic start for Leeds. What a start for Ben Walker, top try scorer in the NRL last season. Has he got top point scorers, I should say, in the NRL last season? Has he got the first try of the game here? We wait for the video referee's decision. Walker gets the Leeds Rhinos off to a flying start with that try. And Ryan Sheridan, missing for so much last season, is back and creating for the Leeds Rhinos. And Ben Walker will try and convert this try. Well, I pose a question at the start about the belief in the lead side. The start they've made to this game has been fantastic. Such confidence in moving the ball around in on the last tackle there, the kick into the in-goal area. It's hardly surprising he was a top point scorer in the NRL. Just seems to sniff out a chance. Can he improve on it? It's a good chance this to improve on it for Walker. Just about slap bang in front of the post. He's got the wind at his back. And he thumps that one high between the uprights. And Leeds, well, not given much of a chance before this game. But they're not paying any attention to what the bookies say because Leeds ahead by six points to nil. Four tackles gone. Diskin almost takes his side up to the 40 metre mark. Sheridan drifts the kick right down the middle of the pitch and. Very With strong win too following that kick, if you remember from the penalty attempt from Deakin, hence the reason why he didn't put too much power on the kick. And there is the penalty, and Ben Walker just taking a little bit too long there. And Russell Smith had warned them. 
It's a difficult situation. You're trying to slow the guy down and control the play of the ball area. But if you do it for too long, you'll get penalised, and that is a costly, costly error. Just giving the Bulls time to get their breath back for 30 seconds. Well, There's Brian Noble, what a debut season he had as the Bradford Bulls coach, winning the grand final and following it up with the World Club Championship. Disappointed to lose the Challenge Cup final. Last year at Drury Twickenham, what a, a miserable day that was. But this year, the Challenge Cup heads for Murrayfield. And who will be heading there? Will it be the Bulls or the Rhinos who go through from this one? At the moment, it's the Rhinos who have their noses in front. But here come Bradford on the attack with Robbie Paul. Paul ghosting through a gap, pops the ball over the top. Was that forward? It was. Touch judge stands his ground. And Vicona looks to the skies. If Leeds are going to win here today, Bill, they're going to need a little bit of luck. And maybe that's the first element of it. Clearly, they had the overlap on the outside. Keatini got himself a little bit out of position, and then the pass went over the top. See, Jimmy Lowe's and Barry McDermott still having a bit of an argument. Here's the pass from Robbie Paul. Gets around outside his man and then flicks it over the top in a basketball type manner. But Vicona, even despite going over the line, is pulled back. See, the pass that occurred just up after the line. And it's about a metre or so further on than the time that Tavita Vicona takes it. Wait, wait, wait. Get in, mate, get in. Stay in, Bradford, back three. Get up in one. He'd seen that move, hadn't he, in training? He knew that Fleary was going to get it. <laughs> Interesting position. He did bump off Deakin. Developed so well in the Ashes series last year. With it coming on, he's going to be a great player for the next 10 or so years. Wins a penalty. Russell Smith certainly wanted to impress upon the players that he won't have any holding down. He wants a fast game. He's going to take the chance to get a further two points. It's a win behind, so a distance shouldn't be a problem. So Ben Walker with this opportunity to extend the Rhinos lead. He's got the wind at his back, but it is swirling around this ground. It's not an easy one for Walker. But he's got that one on target. And Leeds extend their advantage. Malcolm Reilly alongside coach Darren Powell. Darrell Powell will be delighted with that. of uh, Brian, Barry McDermott who's taken a well-earned breather McDonald on his fourth club in four years and really out to prove a point with the Leeds Rhinos never really got a look in Leeds have lost that ball Sinfield querying that decision Bradford aren't gonna hang around and query it they've got it back with Michael Withers 20 Challenge Cup tries for the Bradford Bulls for Withers and Bradford could do with another one from uh, his locker, but it's with Lee Gilmore now. Gilmore plays the ball quickly. Off goes Leslie Vinacolo. Vinacolo takes some stopping. Takes Bradford to within a few metres of that Leeds line. Diskin and Fleary with the tackle. Ben Walker was there as well. Lowe's down the short side, and Vowles has let him slip. Oh, and the try is scored by Daniel Gartner. Bradford came down the short side. And the Bulls 
get the try and Daniel Gartner, one of the unsung heroes of this Bradford Bulls lineup, gets the try. Bradford did so well, they spotted that centre low was down injured in back play, he's seeming on his haunches, it's no real excuse for Adrian Vels, but he spins out of the tackle, great strength from Gartner, you think at that point he's certainly got him and could even force him over the sideline, but brilliant balance, and despite Diskin coming around to try and trap him, there was nothing he could do, that was a quick challenge there that Gilmore got up to his feet quickly and played it, and Viner called well he can bounce and go away from you so quickly as he does there against Fleary, Sucks in Walker, three guys there now on the floor. The one shot on the right-hand side, I think Jimmy Lowe's has spotted it, as he did last week. Found his man, still had a lot to do, but he's got Bradford back into the game. Gartner, quiet, efficient and effective. How effective can Paul Deacon be with this difficult conversion attempt from wide out? Again, the wind causing him all sorts of problems. He's missed with that one, but the Bulls close the gap. It's Bradford four, Leeds eight. And Leeds, they really are putting in a mongrel performance here. Terrier like you were right with that, Bill. Yeah, the defence has lifted since that try, and they've done well to contain the Bulls in those. Five tackles, brilliant kick though, that. Managed to find the gap between Cummins and St. Here is Francis Cummins, what a stalwart he is of this Leeds side. 110 consecutive appearances for the Leeds captain. That is some achievement, isn't it? Yeah, I seem to remember him scoring a beautiful 90-metre interception try at Wembley back in 1994. Probably one of the worst passes ever seen in, uh, in a challenge cup from a Wigan player. You still have nightmares about that. <laughs> Wake up in cold sweat. He looked, he looked good going the other 90 metres. Adamson stopped on halfway. Well, we've got a real contest on our hands here. There were the, those who predicted uh, one-way traffic, especially on the back of that last meeting between these two sides when the Bulls were rampant. Sheridan, another teasing kick, and Withers with that... Really deceptive style, he's got uh, a long stride and he doesn't look to be covering uh, the ground that quickly. No, he's very shallow too behind his own players, perhaps fearing of a chip over from the lead side. It's enabling them to get a bit more ground, wow. How do you try and stop that when he's coming out? You've been like trying to find it, Colo. You've been like trying to tackle a small car, traveling about 20 miles an hour, look at the size of him. Well, he's, 20, he's 17 stone, I should say. And then they Six follow it up, two. they follow it up with Tavita Vicon. It's like playing with eight forwards, isn't it, the way they use the two wingers. Mike Forshaw, Iron Mike they call him, incredibly fit player Forshaw, 32 years old, still going strong, fifth tackle, McDonald it was on lows, now what will Deakin come up with this time, kicking has been a problem, that one takes a ricochet and Diskin is alert to that one, has Anderson landing on top of him, and not surprisingly, the pace of this game is just uh, possibly easing off a bit. Some tremendous hits going in there. He's just rotating the front rows for maybe a three or four minute rest. Fleary coming back on now, McDermott off. An interesting way of using your forwards. Here goes Adrian Vowles. Vowles pops that ball up to Marcus St. Hilaire. Nowhere for St. Hilaire to go. Haven't really seen the wingers in action in this game. Certainly Chev Walker and Marcus St. Hilaire have been starved of possession. Whoa! That's a big hit, and that's uh, an illegal hit. And maybe a little bit of frustration from the Bulls and Andy Hay. Well, it's a, it's a he had right to feel aggrieved there, do you think? Well, I know it's against the rules, It's but a great <laughs> tackle from up here. Can't take the legs of the body's Well, just for a moment, I thought Andy Hay was going to lose it then, but uh, reined himself in. And Leeds get the penalty, and Rob Burrow is on now, and uh, really are ringing the changes, Leeds. Rob Burrow could hurt the Bradford team with his speed, running at the tiring forwards. Vowels now, Vowels for Marcus St. Hilaire. Back on the inside, St. Hilaire, two tackles gone. So we've got three half-backs out there at the moment, Sheridan, Walker, and Rob Burrow. 
Here is Burrow, young player of the year last year. Hey, Burrow, the ball, ball supporters appealing for obstruction there. Senior! Tremendous last test in the Ashes series for Keith Senior. The uh, Aussies were mighty impressed with his performance that gave Great Britain a glimmer of hope. Walker trying to put the step on. Great ball out the back from Walker. And then Burrow puts the grub kick in. Vowles is chasing. Oh, he's lost it as Withers. He's got it touched down. That's a brilliant kick again. That's the second time they've put it into the in goal area. Previously, it was a try. On this occasion, they're going to get a goal line dropout. Second of the game. And Withers is still down. Well, Michael Withers has uh, got a fantastic points scoring record. 68 tries in 81 games, but there's no sign of any opportunities so far for Withers and those ghost-like breaks he makes, because the Bulls have spent a lot of this game on the back foot. Well, just looking at the body language from some of the Bradford players, it looks as though there's a bit of anxiety creeping in there. They're not used to being a few points behind at this stage in a game. And in fact, a little reminiscent of the final last year when things didn't go their way, and they did sort of clam up a little bit, play within themselves. That was, of course, St Helens Day at Twickers. It's Murrayfield we're heading for this year, and that really is an attractive prospect for rugby league supporters, and already Many have bought tickets for the big day in Edinburgh. Looking forward to a return there. Great memories of for the last time. As Walker puts the kick in, Adamson is chasing. So is St Hilaire, and again Withers is there to the rescue for the Bulls. And another goal line dropout. This is great work from the Rhinos. And what a test now. All last year, Bradford was so proud of the defence. It was an area that Brian Noble worked on religiously all through the season. We need something to cheer up the cheer girls because things aren't looking so rosy for them at the moment. I say great memories of Murrayfield. I'm sure there were one or two people who went there last time in 2000 who uh, still have trouble remembering what happened. I know I had a good time. <laughs> at least I'm told I did. We will again this year, Bill. Here's Andy Hay. Forward the call from the Bulls supporters. He's made some penetrating runs down that left-hand side of the field. Sinfield to Vowles. Uh, senior, I beg your pardon. It's Senior coming back infield and weaving his way through. Keith Senior. Sheridan. Burrow. Walker. Oh, Cummins juggles and keeps a hold of it. 34th consecutive Challenge Cup Challenge Cup appearance for Francis Cummins. First Challenge Cup appearance for Matt Adamson, and I think he might be enjoying this one. It's a really good forwards battle, this is. Dramatically improved Lee's performance. Sheridan! Oh, Sheridan's lost that ball. Now then, was that stolen? And Adamson is there. Sorry, he says. <laughs> Well, he's making the point that you were just about to raise. He ducked in between two defenders. You thought it was a certain try. Withers his arm, right time it is that catches the ball. I think he just simply loses possession. He's going over the line. And I think Russell Smith's going to agree with me. All right, mate, no problem, Matt. And give the head and feed to Paul Deacon on the Bradford side. And what a difference that would have made. I'm sure another six points at that stage in the game. Alarm bells may have started to ring in the Bradford changing room at half time. Just about four minutes to go to the break, and this is equally a dangerous time for the Rhinos. They don't want to allow the Bulls to get at the other end of the pitch and maybe get their noses in front because there's still an opportunity for them to do that. Just four points separate the two sides. Here is Fielden. Did well there to target Rob Burrow. He knew he could get maybe a few extra yards and a quick play. Oh, but... Fielden's lost that ball. The penalty will go Bradford's way. And Burrow accused of pulling that ball out. Ball's just in the last few minutes. It perhaps looked a little bit flat. We talked earlier about the game last week against the Newcastle Knights. To get yourself back up for a game like this is pretty difficult within a week. And they struggled in this first half. Anderson trying to give them some momentum. Charge into the Leeds ranks. And here's Vinacolo. He'll give them momentum. Fowles tries to put the hit on him and misses. Sotilera, he brings him down. And 
just a hold up in play because there's two balls on the pitch. Still time for Bradford in this first half to find a way through this Leeds defence. Withers out to Vicona. Vicona back on the inside. Naylor is flattened. It went backwards, says the referee. Three tackles gone. Desperate defence that side of the field for the Leeds Rhinos. Here come Bradford again, for sure. Fleary with the hit. Four tackles gone. Just about two minutes of the first half to go. Lowe's down the short side again. Senior comes up and clatters Scott Naylor. Five tackles gone. Now then, the kick is crucial. Or will they go down the short side? Peacock trying to twist and turn his way out of trouble. That's going to be the turnover. What defence from the Rhinos. Francis Cummings applauding his teammates to withstand another Bulls onslaught at that stage. Five tackles, that's a fantastic effort. And what a dramatic improvement inside just six months since they were last here. So we were able to withstand though. Look at the speed here now though of Robbie Paul going up. They're trying to force an error and do something of an impact just before half time. The Leeds blowing their trumpet at the moment. Because few would have predicted that they'd have been ahead at this stage. But with half time approaching, they are eight points to four. Four tackles gone. Sinfield will maybe try for a 40 20. Vicona didn't take the gamble of stretching out for that. Had an opportunity to gather it and then bring it forward to Vita Vicona. Terrific player in that situation. Top tackle busts last season and meters gained for the Bradford Bulls. Vicona. And it runs like that that you've just seen from Vicona and Naylor. It might not have a massive impact at this stage, but they're taking a lot of energy out of the lead side. Adamson working hard from Marker. A lot of the Leeds guys, especially the debutantes, Fowles, Walker, Adamson, out to impress tonight. Gilmore drifting back across the field, yet to go forward. Now he does, and he's immediately stopped in his tracks by Ryan Sheridan and Darren Fleary. For sure. Oh, fouls up and... Collars Withers, but Withers gets away and a little basketball flip from Withers to Deacon. Fielded. Senior clings onto him. Five tackles gone again. Deacon will put the kick in. Shapes to kick on. He's pinned down by Sinfield. Great work from Kevin Sinfield though, because it could have been a further dangerous kick from Paul Deacon. It took all the danger out of it by putting him under pressure. And it looks as though Leeds have ridden out the storm, at least for this first half. As Marcus St. Hilaire tries to go around Lee Gilmore. Walker, here is Wayne McDonald. McDonald checks his stride and then puts his shoulder down. As the hooter goes for half time. And cheers from the Rhino supporters. Second half underway and Leeds ahead. By eight points to four, a really unlikely scenario that it has to be said. And when you compare it with the last time they were here in September last year, when at half time the Bulls were ahead by 38 points to eight and went on to win that one 62 18. So, really, this is a transformation in this Leeds Rhino side. Can they maintain it for another 40 minutes, Phil? That's the big question for them. Stuart Field has just given Brian Noble the best possible start to the second half with a thunderous run down that left-hand side, and he's here again for his second one in a set of six tackles. That's a more impressive performance from the Bradford side to get up over the halfway line in four tackles. They really do want to make an impression early on in this second half, the Bulls. And Leeds know that not only have they got their wind in their faces in this second half, but they've got a very angry pack of Bulls. As Deacon puts the kick in and Marcus St. Hilaire down on one knee to field that ball, cricket style, and then run it back, St. Hilaire, looking for a big season, the uh, Leeds winger, didn't have the best of luck last year, injuries restricting him to only 19 appearances. Here's Wayne McDonald, can Leeds match the effort that they put in in that first half? Peacock and McDonald just having a, a little discussion after the ball had gone. Burrow drifts the kick in. That's for Vinacolo to turn back and chase. And now then, can he bring the ball out for the Bradford Bulls? 
good chase from Leeds again. Brilliant, brilliant performance. The kick was first class, and then the chase as well. Sinfield up there to trap them within 10 metres from the line. Again, that's such a pleasing result. And you do have to watch the Bulls side because they've got such pace wide out, and the wingers do tend to scoot from that acting halfback position. To beat a by corner with a, one of those infamous charges, but 30 metres just gets his side on a roll and Laws follows it on. Fielder. There's fouls putting the shoulder in there. Lowe's. There's a bit of urgency about this Bradford's start to the second half, but then Robbie Paul puts that ball down. The ball dipping at his toes. Costly mistake for the Bulls because the lead side was so stretched on the near side of the field, the pass just dropping too low for him. They did have an overlap. A further mistake helps the Leeds cause. They get possession on the first tackle, probably just about the halfway line. What a difference a week's made for Robbie Paul. Last week he couldn't do a thing wrong. Sinfield from the base of the scrum. Can't make any headway for the Rhinos. It's important for the Rhinos that they don't become nervous and retreat within the shell. They've got to continue to play the way they played in the first half, which was asking a lot of questions of the Bulls' defensive line, moving the players around, a lot of intricate players and a lot of passing. The wind still howling around. Here's a little Rob Burrow. But what a contrast you've got out there for the Leeds Rhinos. You've got Wayne McDonald, the tallest guy in Super League at six foot seven, the tallest forward, certainly. And Rob Burrow, probably the shortest player in Super League. And Burrow making his Challenge Cup debut for the Bulls. Senior, fifth tackle, they go down the short side. Sinfield stabs the kick in, but nobody on the chase, and Withers picks it up. And Withers lost that ball right in front of the touch judge, and Sinfield celebrates the tackle. And Withers is disgusted, and it's just not going right for the Bulls, is it? No, it wasn't a very dangerous kick from Kevin Sinfield. Just an uncharacteristic mistake. I don't really think he could claim that the ball was ripped out. No interference. Just a good hit at first from Sinfield, then Keith Senior comes in and wrestles him down. And 10 metres from the line, perfect attacking position. Here's Keith Senior now. Senior just inside that 10 metre line. Sheridan now, Darren Fleary, and Fleary, no subtlety about Fleary. Two tackles gone. That ball's come out. And Fielden is penalised. I'd be surprised if they don't elect for the two points. Kick so well. Francis Cummings just coming over. He's saying that he's knocked it out with his arm. Well, Stuart Fielden cannot believe that decision. But it could cost his side a further two points. Now, how can Ben Walker cope with the wind in his face? Two from two so far for the Rhinos' new recruit. The man bought to fill the boots of Yestin Harris. And that is some task. But Walker, top point scorer in the NRL last season, knows all about this part of the business. And if he can help contribute to a Rhinos victory here, at this stage of the Challenge Cup, he'll be an instant hit with the supporters, that's for sure. The wind in his face. And Walker's hooked it. He's missed that one. Would have been a very significant kick. I think it would have been worth more than two points psychologically to get the first score in the second half. Would have been a massive boost to the Rhinos. As it is, they're probably going to be trying to retrieve a a drop kick from the 20-meter line anywhere down deep in their own half. Well, this this will travel. And Deacon Get him off. hits it low and hard, and Adamson runs it back hard at the Bradford defense. But the Rhinos have the ball in their possession, and as long as they've got the ball in their possession, there's not a lot the Bulls can do about the scoreline. Wayne McDonald. Here goes Sheridan, and now Fleary. The big men doing a sterling Leeds, job for the Leeds Rhinos so far. Good footwork to spin out the tackle and get another few metres. Here's Kevin Sinfield. Sinfield, his education increased with uh, his performances in the Ashes series. 
Adamson, long striding run and then flicks the ball out. Burrow, Burrow gets away from Fielden and then scampers back and little Rob Burrow puts the kick in. That's going to be too strong, is it? An ambitious kick from Rob Burrow. He'd done so well to evade the plays in the first place. Got himself back over on that right-hand side. Just think, Vels wanted it. Ball in hand early to take his man on. Skips back across to the side of the field. He's got two options there. He's got the passing side of the kick to the in goal. He's gone too deep on that occasion. Vinicolo just going to knock to the uh, face by the look of things. Meanwhile, here's Scott Naylor. There is Rob Burrow. There's not a lot of him, but he could be a thorn in the opposition side, that's for sure. Peacock. Four tackles gone, and Sinfield pushing his Quicker luck there. Lead. Quicker lead, says Stewart Cummins. Oh, and Anderson's gone without it. And there's great spirit about this lead side. Well, Adamson just giving a bit of verbal abuse, I think, here to Anderson, saying he was lucky and he got up quickly. But Donald was up in front of him as well. He's a mistake, should not tend to see from the Bradford Bulls. The completion rate, what coaches put so much emphasis on so low today, failing to get to the last tackle or put an effective and worthwhile kick in at the end of your period in possession. So lead still ahead. The last time Bradford were behind at half time here at uh, the Bradford and Bingley Stadium was 10 8 to St Helens in August last year. And of course, they went on to win that one. It's not a position they're very comfortable in all year last, last season. They like to get out to an early start, get plenty of points on the board, especially by about 20 or 30 minutes, in, minutes into the first half, have a good clear advantage. That's when they're at the most relaxed. This is the question, as it was in the final, where they remain trialers for the game. Can they handle a tight one being behind? Like he was great dancing on Rob Burrows, then the way Sinfield puts the kick in, it's straight into the arms of Vinacolo, now Withers. But the cover was good there from Leeds, nowhere for Withers to go. Here's Vinacolo, and that's great defence again. And it was Sheridan leading the way there, but somebody's going to get you. And if it's not Vinacolo, it's Vicona, and now it's Vinacolo. <laughs> Back to Vicona, on to Vinacolo, and where's Vangana? The flying V's, they'll call them. They might be V for victory. They need it. Peacock. And this is turning into a real scrap. A real tasty cup scrap, this is. Anderson forward shouts the crowd. They're right. And the tempers are fraying. And this only goes to further leads his cause. This will suit them. The more Bradford get rattled, the worse the performance will become. It's a line ball, really. I don't know whether there was much in it. He actually dropped it anyway. But again, the giving ball to Leeds in and around the halfway line. What I'm sure Brian Noble will want them to do is be kicking the ball and make Brad the uh, Bradford side defend down close on the Leeds line. That scrums a, a real tangle. Sinfield. Now here's Keith Senior. Sinfield. Adamson. Adamson and Anderson look to be striking up a bit of a rapport there. That oh, was a good tackle. He stopped him dead in his tracks. Adamson's done well so far. McDonald, they're just putting the squeeze on now, aren't they? The Bulls. I wonder what Dal Poe's got left on his bench. He's got Poaching and uh, Jones Buchanan. Does he need a further impact? This is the period when they have struggled. The Bulls fans screaming that that ball went forward. Referee looks at touch judge, decided it went back. There's a Bradford player in trouble in back play as Leeds go forward and go out of play. Oh, the Bradford player in big trouble by the look of things. And there's the two coaches, Brian Noble and Daryl Powell, not giving a lot away. Oh, and a clash of heads there, Robbie Paul and Daniel Gartner. And it's Robbie Paul who's come off worse there. I think from the signal that the physio was giving, it looks as though he's damaged his right arm, one of the arms anyway. 
I don't know, I think he got a whack on the head. And of course, he injured his neck last week against Newcastle Knights. And Martin Clawson, the new Bulls physio and conditioner. Oh, look at that. And Well, he's still down. Now in the pre-season friendly at Castleford, he got a knock on the head, which needed stitches. He got a, a knock last week against the Newcastle Knights. Can't take too much more. I think the knock on the head, though, could have just been the booby prize. I think, is it the shoulder? The arm? Leon Price was warming up to come on anyway. He seems to have adopted the standoff position from the scrum. As he did last week when Robbie went off against Newcastle. And Robbie Paul leaves the game again. He's had uh, an unfortunate start to the season. As the Bulls captain. 200th appearance for the club. And that's not the way he would have wanted to mark it. And Leon Price marking his arrival immediately with a terrific run. That's what the Bulls need. Sinfield is all over him and will concede the penalty. Such a devastating player. What an impact to come on. And, well, he's got the Bulls crowd behind them. Can he lift his own teammates? Now, this is Bradford's chance. Anderson on the charge. The leads have been gallant in defence, but can they maintain that? Vicona trying to go on the outside. Oh, that's a good ball for Lowe's. Anderson keeps it alive. Knocked on, says Russell Smith. The Bulls supporters are furious. It was another one of those 50-50 calls. We talked about it in the first half. Leeds had a little bit of luck. There's a skirmish going on. And now there's been some abuse to the referee. And Russell Smith has awarded a penalty to the lead side, taking all the pressure off them. Difficult time for Brian Noble at half-time. He needed to improve the performance of his side, but he also needed them to remain patient. Well, Leeds are doing their darndest to frustrate this Bradford side, to infuriate them, to really make them work for every inch of territory, for every moment of possession. A Leeds player is now spark out. It's Kevin Sinfield and Leon Hay. Leon Price caught him. I don't know how hard he hit him, but he certainly knocked him to the ground. Well, it really is boiling up out there. Andy Hay actually came across to the touch judge to ask him whether he'd seen that incident. Here is Matt Adamson. Well, there's no love lost between these two very close rivals. And it's Leeds still in the lead. Sinfield seems to be recovered. Hay. He's got his dander up as Andy Hay, fifth tackle. Now Sheridan looking around, weighing up the options. Drop goal is the option. One point for Ryan Sheridan. Every point could be crucial. And Sheridan, who's been a real star in the cup for the Leeds Rhinos, is a bit of a cup talisman, really. A try scorer in eight of their cup ties since 1999, and a drop goal scorer here. Well, he's also taken just a bit of enthusiasm out of the Bulls fans. They're just starting to find the voices following that break from Leon Price. And it's just certainly put them back down in the seats. Please, captain, please. Russell Smith really does have his hands full today. Please. Well, Russell Smith wants to talk to the two captains again. He's called over Francis Cummins and James Lowe's, who's now the captain on the pitch in the place of uh, Robbie Paul's absence. Okay. So that incident. A little while ago, when Sinfield was laid out, has gone on report. You saw it there at the top of the screen. It was a nasty challenge, probably all brought about by the frustration that Liam Price has felt while sitting on the bench, watching his team in a rather lacklustre performance by their standards. Can't take anything away, though, from Leeds. It's been a wonderful, wonderful display. Have they got the energy, though, to last it for the full 80? They're ahead by nine points to four. 
A place in the fifth round of the Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Challenge Cup is at stake here. There's still a long, long way to go in this competition before you can begin to think about Murrayfield. But if Leeds could get off to a start like this, it would really give them a great boost for the coming Super League season. So Adamson just take another drive up. I think the Leeds fans will be pretty pleased with him as a replacement for Bradley Clyde. Clyde missed a lot of last season through injury, but Adamson, what a major start and impact he's had on the side. Don't forget, Leeds are playing at the moment without Barry McDermott, probably the most intimidating forward, and when he comes back onto the field, all of his teammates tend to rise in the performance. Vinacolo, no way through for Big Les, but here's Big Joe. And Big Joe makes some ground for the Bulls. Oh no, they're all out there now. Vangana, Vinacolo, and Vicona. I'll let you deal with those then, Bill. I'll talk about the Leeds players. And there's Vorshaw and Vielden. <laughs> the speech therapy is really working. And Vithers. Deacon puts the kick in. He's going for a 40 20. I think he's got it. Oh, valiant effort from Chev Walker. But that, that could be a crucial intervention from Paul Deacon. Well, very often you can single out incidents in a game as turning points. This could certainly be the one that keeps Bradford in this Challenge Cup. Wonderful, wonderful kick. His kicking game last week against the Newcastle Knights was first class. Despite what Chev Walker was trying to do, I even doubted he'd been able to control it. Had he got a hand to it? No, then. Big, big test. Will Price take them on himself? Well, this is a great opportunity for the Bradford Bulls now. And Price do, does try and tra take him on, but here goes Withers. Withers, the try scorer extraordinaire for the Bradford Bulls. No way through for him that time. Lowe's looking for a way through. He can't find a way. Leeds desperately trying to keep these Bulls at bay. Price is all wrapped up. Three tackles gone. Just a few metres away from that line. St. Hilaire all over Leon Price. Down the short side. Vinacolo is in touch. Oh, what defence for the Rhinos. Came off for them in the first half, but you can see the Leeds players there gathering around the teammates. What a performance there. Adrian Vels hits him with everything he's got and he needed to, too, just to force him over the sideline. Missed him in the first half. Didn't miss him that time. Well, this might not be pretty, but it's compelling stuff. It really is. Just five points between these two sides. And not many people, the bookmakers included, gave Leeds a prayer in this game, especially on the basis of four, four meetings with the Bulls last season and four defeats. It's also the small matter of cup form over the, the last four years and or the last four meetings rather and the Bulls have won three of those so really it was all against the Rhinos but at the moment at the moment they're in the lead. I think they've burnt the record books haven't they at Headingley this, this year. Not looking at anything in the past they're only focusing on the future. Big kick downfield from Addison and look at the enthusiasm with the chase. And it's the new boys Adamson and Walker leading it. Well, they must really be enjoying this taste of Challenge Cup for football. Here's Vicona now. No way through for Vicona, and look at that defence from Leeds. Wait, lads, wait, wait. You start now to look at the white jerseys. Who's putting the hand up? Who wants to get the side forward and get them out of trouble? Here's Gartner. His try. All that Bradford have got to show for their efforts so far. And they get a penalty. And it's a long time since they've had a penalty. They'll need that relief. I think they've come to a conclusion they can't go through this lead side anymore, maybe like they did last year. Now throwing the ball wide to see if they can go around them. Well, how much longer can Leeds sustain this level of effort and commitment? in the face of this pounding they're receiving from the Bradford Bulls side. And the pounding led by Big Joe, and fin Sinfield turns away from that collision, clutching his head, and he's looking very groggy indeed. Two and a 
And Fangener again, hammering away at this Leeds defence. McDonald, McDermott, Leeds, Leeds, back, back. and Rob Burrow in there. Oh, and Forshaw's lost that ball, well, he rang the changes. Two dummy runners, Forshaw took it, and he lost it, but there's two Leeds players down now. Well, it was McDermott and McDonald, the two Big Macs, really, and Forshaw got sandwiched between the two of them. Is that one of the special two. offers? <laughs> I don't know, I don't think we can do Brandon endorsement, can we? Brandon endorsement? No, it's Brandon Costin. Oh, head, sorry. Well, maybe Brian Noble's looking at bringing him on, just warming up on the uh, far touch line. Well, McDonald recovered as Walker puts the kick in and then chases Vinacolo under pressure again. And Vinacolo is pinned down. This is terrific. That is fantastic kicking ability. That's the fourth goal line dropout that Leeds have managed to get the Bradford side to kick to them. Wonderful kick, so hard. And look at the enthusiasm there. Vowels. Centilla and Walker trap him in the own goal area. Nothing at all that Vinacolo could do. Did well, in fact, to gather the ball and prevent any further threat. So Bradford drop out once more. And here is Willie Poaching, another Leeds debutant. Immensely popular with the Wakefield Wildcats supporters, but left there at the end of last season, and now he's a rhino. Adamson, and it's Leeds on the charge now, attacking the end where their supporters are waiting. Burrow trying to dart and dodge and find a way through this Bradford defence, and it's the Bulls' turn to defend. Walker, Sheridan, little shimmy from Sheridan. Now Senior, Senior trying to find a... a way through and it runs straight at Scott Naylor. Hey, Sheridan. Fifth tackle, it's the Bulls turn to defend and they're defending well. They need to keep them at bay as Walker goes for the drop goal and he would have found the net here at the Bradford and Bingley Stadium. Price with us now. With us for Naylor. Naylor runs into some more good Leeds defence. Four Lee men there. Lee Wait, get, get Wait, Leeds. And Russell Smith being very patient. Fielding trying to get away. Takes two of them to bring him down, but good work from Fielding. Gets his side up to the halfway line. Fangener now. Well, they've proved one thing, Leeds. You can't certainly go through them. That's five tackles gone. Needs to be a good kick now. Deacon, little grubber, oh, and coaching falls on it. Referee says it wasn't a knock-on, it went backwards. Well, they just got in the way of the kick and they've harassed and harassed this side, really. Here's Cummins. Taking over the captaincy from Yestin Harris. Sinfield now. Sinfield takes on Leon Price. Wait. Costin Wait. there as well. Adamson. Adamson, a good run from the big former Penrith Panther. Five tackles gone. Sheridan poised to put in another telling kick, is he? He's gone for one point, and they're getting even lower, these. And you get six of Aussie rules for getting it between the goalposts, but uh, doesn't really help the Leeds cause. Still plenty of time for Leeds. For Bulls, I should say. Gilmore, vowels again, makes the tackle. Fielden. Oh, and Fielden took a big hit there, but kept his feet. And McDermott, it wasn't McDermott, is in again. They can't afford to give a penalty away at this day's Leeds now. Costin, former Huddersfield Giant. Signed in the close season. Here's Lowe's. Lowe's great ball for Costin. Oh, and Gilmore couldn't take that ball in. They had the men out wide. 
I think that's the first time I've seen Jimmy Laws run in this second half. So dangerous when he does it. Got the support, the pass over then onto Gilmore. He just couldn't take it in. It was a two-on-one situation with Marcus Centella. And you'd really have to back Bradford to come away with a try. Had the ball gone to hand. Just taking it in. Only 50 metres from the line. But again, Bradford missed a chance. Well, will words from the Bradford camp come back to haunt them? We said in the build-up to this game that they'd like to go through the season unbeaten. A tall order, I know, and... I think they might regret saying that publicly, or getting out publicly anyway. It's one thing setting your own team goals, but it's the second thing for them to become public knowledge. Vowles leads, clinging on for dear life to this lead. Fangina tried to take out Adamson there, missed with that shot. Eventually, Adamson's brought down by Naylor and Price. The Bulls looking for a third consecutive Challenge Cup final appearance. They want to go back to Murrayfield, where they won the Cup against the Leeds Rhinos in 2000. But at the moment, it's Leeds who are looking more likely as that ball is squeezed out. It's still loose. Play on, says the touch judge. Play on, says the referee. It is. The lead side did manage to push it back. Oh, I think they were lucky to get away with that. Andy Hare just forcing it back. Adamson picked it up. And that's a penalty. Penalty will go to Leeds. And plenty of verbals going on out there. We see the kick go in from Rob Burrow. And Leon Price, his left hand just holds him back. A completely ineffective attempt, really, of doing anything. There was no way that a Leeds player was going to get the ball. Uh, it's easier to criticise when you're not playing in the heat of the battle, but I, I can't really imagine what's going through Leon Price's mind to, to want him to make, do that, really, at that I stage. you're right, though. You said mentioned a few moments ago, frustration. And it must be growing. Ten minutes to go, under ten minutes to go, and they still can't find a way through this obstinate Rhino's defence. You've got to give yourself a chance by holding on to the ball and the lead side had just given them possession. They had six tackles, albeit maybe 90 metres to go, but they had a chance of scoring. This stage, the clock just continues to tick away and Ben Walker can demonstrate what a great goal kicker he is. Two successes from three attempts. Those two successes came in the first half when he had the wind at his back. This is a much trickier proposition. It really is howling down the pitch here at the Bradford Bingley Stadium. But if he can land this, it could be a crucial two points for the Leeds Rhinos. Walker then, has he got this one on target? He has. Ben Walker's penalty edges Leeds Rhinos closer to a place in the fifth round of the Challenge Cup. The Bulls have some work to do in the closing minutes here. It's Bradford 4, Leeds 11. Who'd have put the money on this? And the Leeds fans came hoping, but I'm not sure they were believing that they'd go away with a win. They're starting to see, think they can see the finish line at this stage. A short kickoff was predicted. It's gone, but not gone 10. Oh, nothing, nothing is going right for the Bradford Bulls. The kick has to go 10 metres. It was a clever attempt, really, from Deakin and the Bulls. They thought maybe there was a gap in the Leeds defensive line that they could pick the ball up and get possession back, which is what they need now, seven points behind. Seven minutes to go. <laughs> Willie poaching now. A Leeds try here would surely finish it off. Burrow, little darting run from Rob Burrow. Burrow still trying to find a way through, and then he is cleaned out by Lee Gilmore, it was. 
and Burrow felt that one. McDermott. Lowe's and Fielding are in there. Will they go for one point here? Sheridan, Sheridan, trying to go all the way, he will do! Ryan Sheridan, a cup talisman for the Leeds Rhinos. Is a cup talisman again. The Bulls cannot believe it. Ryan Sheridan had his problems last year with injury. Frustrated with a hamstring problem throughout most of the season. But what a game he's had today. What a start to 2002. Takes on the defenders, bounces between Deakin and Laws, and crashes over for the match-winning try. You just saw the rest of the Leeds team sprint to congratulate him. Wonderful performance from him and his teammates to take on the world champions in their own pitch, in their own unbeatable ground, or so it was thought, and come away with what now I think will be a certain and a historic win for them in the Challenge Cup. Sheridan, a try scorer in nine cup ties now since 1999, and Mal really just a, a glimpse, a glimpse. Well, that's a smile out from Mal. <laughs> no, it is. He's really, really happy. He's just trying to not show it because he thinks he might be on television. Well, ben Walker now has a difficult conversion attempt. But what an achievement this is from the Leeds Rhinos. And all those Leeds fans who didn't come because they didn't think they had a chance, well, they've been wishing they'd change their minds right now. But it's still only the fourth round of the Challenge Cup. Mind you, when Leeds got to Wembley in uh, 1999, they started off their campaign with a victory over Wigan, which was some achievement. And it's a similarly impressive start to this one. He's hit that one well. Not for nothing was he top NRL point scorer last year. He didn't accumulate 279 points by accident. And the Bulls, the unthinkable for them, defeat on their own patch. 16 games last season, unbeaten here. And in fact, they haven't lost in Bradford since year 2000, I think it was. And the last side to beat them in Bradford were the Leeds Rhinos. Well, the short kickoff this time came off for the Bradford Bulls side, but I think it's going to be too little too late. They won't give up trying right till the very end. Gartner. But a try now for Bradford, which certainly put the cat among the pigeons. Brian Noble and his coaching team looking philosophical. Lowe's, Price, Deacon, short ball, Fielden steaming onto that one. Now this is a chance for Bradford. Lowe's flips the ball out, it's still with Bradford. It's back to one, Leeds got a hand to it. This is a chance for the Bulls. Gilmore. Tackled by Poaching. Vangana straight up the middle now. Jamie Jones Bu Buchanan has entered the fray. That's him making the tackle there. Lowe's. Deacon. Must be a try on here. Fielden is just short of the line. And Fielden wisely decided against stretching out because he would have been penalised for a double movement. Still with the balls. Withers. No sign of that cut magic from Withers, but there could be cut magic here from Brandon Costin, and Costin is in, is he? No, he took the flag out, and the Bulls players furious at that decision. Well, he's made up with himself from Burrow. What a hit there on Brandon Costin. Forced him onto the corner flag before he could ground the ball, was, was my view. Russell Smith wants to check this on the replay screen. But I don't think there's any doubt from our positioning where we're stood. Oh, I don't know. He threw everything at him, Casting. the head, the body, the shoulders, the leg drive. No, Costin he... gave it a good shot, and I reckon he's got that down. No, no try. 
It was a tremendously athletic, acrobatic effort from Brandon Costin because he was already heading out of play. But I think he gets that ball down before he makes contact with that flag. He's still in the air. Impossible to tell from that angle. I think that's a tremendous effort from Costin. The right arm's touching the flag. Nonsense. The, the ball's not on the ground, he's touching the flag, Bill. I think it's going to be academic either way. Apart from to Brandon Costin's statistics. Well, Brandon Costin... ..thinks he's got that one. At least he'd have the satisfaction of a try on his Challenge Cup debut. But what's the video ref's decision? No try. <laughs> Clark's right again. Big pat on the back for the touch, Judge. He did it well at real time. Imagine two guys flying at you. Picked it very well. People spoke last year about the impact that Jason Smith had at Hull. But what about Matt, Matt Adamson and Walker here today? What a stars they're going to be in Super League this year. Well, after the unconvincing end to the season from Leeds last year, this will give them plenty of heart. Wait, Wait. What a scalp this is. Ryan Sheridan voted uh, man of the match. Poaching's oh. lost that ball, but regathered it. Play on, says the referee. Back to one, Pink Spike, Jamie Lowe's. Back to one. Pink Spike, Jamie The lead supporters celebrating already as Burrow just puts the kick in, running the clock down. Bradford, grand finalists, Super League champions and World Club champions, but there's no Challenge Cup glory for them this year. And Leeds have done what no other side has managed here at the Bradford and Bingley Stadium, and that's defeating the Bradford Bulls. What a healthy start to our competition in 2002, when our world champions can beat the Newcastle Knights and then a team can come and play them, and what a magnificent performance from Leeds full of character and endeavour. All the things that maybe that they've been questioned for in the past. Real true grit. Wonderful team spirits, kept them together, they've worked for one another. And they managed to restrict the ball to only one simple try in the first half. Here's Leslie Vinacolo, and they've kept Vinacolo shackled as well. The kicking game from Leeds has been one of the keys to this success. Penalty goes Bradford's way and Vinacolo swats Darren Fleury aside and that is no easy task as well because Fleury is one of the toughest tacklers in the business. But Vinacolo hasn't been allowed to hit his stride and neither is Vicona. Gilmore trying to hit his stride but Leeds showing the sort of defensive commitment that they've displayed right from the word go. That's still alive. second tackle. And the referee, well, that's harsh on Lee Gilmore, I think. Well, because he's really called it. Yeah, he's called hell. I thought he was going to get pushed down. Don't contest it, mate. I thought he was going to get pushed down. And Bradford disappointed at that decision. Disappointed with the result, not so the Leeds Rhinos. Delight for them, they go through to the fifth round of the Challenge Cup with one of the most memorable performances in recent history for the Rhinos. Not really given much chance coming here to the home of the Bulls, but they've produced a tremendously courageous and heroic performance, and they've won it. They've knocked the balls out. It's Bradford 4, Leeds 17. What a start then for the new boy, Ben Walker. Four goals and a try on his Leeds Rhinos Challenge Cup debut. Ryan Sheridan also a try and a drop goal. For the Bulls, just a try from Daniel Gartner. Leeds winning it by 17 points to four.